Okay, let us do the round 12 player ratings, guys. Such an upbeat vibe to me this morning. Oh man, isn't it, isn't it phenomenal what a bunch of guys can do for your emotions for an entire week and how good they can make you feel and how fucking angry they can make you feel? Um, yeah, if you're new here, welcome. Welcome to Blue Broad. Welcome to the Blue Broad YouTube channel. I like to do a review and a player ratings video after each game. These are not official. These are just my, this is just my opinion. Um, what I like to do here is start the conversation and I like you guys to finish the conversation in the comments below. So um, don't take anything I say to heart. Just have a discussion. It's fruitful, it's practical, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So let's begin. Now, Lockie Plowman in the back line, Liam Jones and Kate Simpson. Plowman, um, I, I noticed him at the start of the game on, on Michael Walters. I also noticed him on Fife when Fife rotated forward. And can we give the guy some fucking credit? Can we give the guy some credit? Because that is a daunting role. On Walters, on Fife, you got no room to breathe. Uh, Walters was goalless. I believe he had 10 touches. Fife didn't kick a goal when he went forward. Um, but Walters was the main uh, opponent there for Lockie Plowman. I, I noticed a, a shepherd for Kennedy, which was smart in the third quarter with two minutes 30 to go. A big intercept mark in the fourth quarter with 9.45 to go. With my ratings, I like to look at it this way. What was his role and how did he perform it? And that is that is all we could have asked for Lockie Plowman yesterday. I gave him a nine for his game. Thought it was phenomenal. I really did. Um, didn't win a lot of the ball. Um, but you could tell he had a defensive mindset, a lockdown mindset on the day, and he got his job done, and he continues to have a really good season for us, probably after two downish weeks in a row, the last two games, so good to see him back into form. Jonesy, uh, a strong tackle on five in the first, six, six minutes, 35 to go. He gave away a free kick with 31 seconds to go in the first quarter, which was a bit clumsy. Uh, a good spoil in the second quarter, 6.42 to go. Um... Third quarter, there was a moment, I get it, it was wet, you know, but he drops the mark, it slips right through his fingers, Tabana runs onto a goal, and it hurt, it hurt, you know, because if you're not going to mark it, Jonesy, you know, tap it forward, and I'm, you know, obviously he knows, but um, I just thought this game last night was full of just some moments like that, um, just some bad ones. Uh, he took a mark inside 50, which I thought, oh my God, can you imagine he kicks this goal and wins us the game? He misses it, unfortunately. Um, I guess I should give him some credit because we concede 36 points for a game. I know it was wet and all of those things, but uh, I just found myself giving him just a pass mark for his game. I gave him a 5 out of 10. Um, I might be being a bit harsh there. Maybe, maybe he should be given a 6, and maybe that's something you, you guys can finish off in the comments. But I just... My gut feeling said a five, a pass mark. He wasn't, he didn't lose. He didn't lose on the day, but I don't think he gave us a, a hell of a lot in the positive way either. Um, he was sort of neither here or there. So a uh, pass mark for me. Simo, um, he went hard and drew a free kick in the first quarter with 11 minutes, 21 to go. Um, he had four in the first quarter and uh, he didn't have a lot for the game, but with Simo, I mean, guys, you know, can, can, when you play footy, you if you're not you're not fearful of a lot of things but one of the things you are fearful of is a wet ball to the face like that that like uh, that rattled my soul watching that that was that was hard to watch and i just felt for him so much and maybe i'm being a little soft on him now but i really really felt for him and I can only imagine, like I've played footy in the wet and the like, it's it's just the last thing you want. It um, I can only imagine how much it rattled him, like just his face and oh my God, but for him to get up and, and continue to just keep playing and there's no doubt that would have shaken him up, no doubt, but he is a warrior for our footy club. Didn't have a lot of the ball, we had the eight touches, but I, I, just, I just can't help but feel that that would have really impacted him. I really can't. Um, so I gave him a six for his game. Didn't have a lot of it. Um, but I thought, you know, he just, he just battled on. So that's just how I saw it and how I felt. Next line, we've got Doherty, Weedering and Samo. Doherty, he had three in the first quarter and I found myself saying, I want more. And then all of a sudden, finally, he snapped out of it. I thought he finally came out of this rough patch that he's kind of been in. 
And then from that second quarter onwards, he was great. He was real. It was just so pleasing. You know, he was he was tough. He, he, the, the spoiling. There was a great kick out of defense in the second quarter. Um, there was a kick to um, to Plowman in the third quarter with 11:50 to go, which I thought was the symbolic moment of his return to form. It was a nice long kick down the line onto the wing, and it was sorry, it was across the it was sort of across the face of goal as Plowman was running from D50 onto the wing in the third quarter, and I thought it was just a beautiful kick. A lot of depth in it. Um, a huge spawn in the third quarter with two minutes, 10 to go. Really massive. And then another one in the fourth quarter with 6.20 to go. And the defensive moments were there for him yesterday. And those captain moments were there. And he took them. And, and that's all we've been asking for him. So I gave him an eight for his game. Um, he ends up having, I believe, the 19 touches. I could be wrong on that. He has, yeah. So 18 kicks and a and a handball. And I thought he was I thought it was really solid for us. So I gave him an eight. Jacob Wiedering, absolute bullshit free kick paid against him in the first. Like him and Tabana, they had each other. Like, why is that not just a play on? You know, anyway, it is what it is. And you can just tell he takes them personally. And that's what I love. I love that he takes when when goals are kicked against him, but he takes it personally, like it hurts him. Uh, yesterday was a day that his opponent kicked three, and he'd be filthy. You just know, you just you can just tell in his body language, and he, you know, in a in a group where we always want people, you know, playing who care, you can just tell he, it, it matters to him. He wants that record of least goals kicked, or he wants the All Australian. Uh, um, Jacket, you know, it's it's so good to see. And given he was given a contract extension as well, he didn't let that affect his performance, um, which has happened quite a bit this year from from the rest of the league. So, thought that was good. Uh, he was ragged old by Tabana for Tabana's second goal in the second. He kicked it out in the full in the third, two minutes thirty five to go, which I thought was very uncharacteristic of him. Um, a good intercept mark in the fourth with seven minutes, 10 to go. I gave him a pass mark. I think I might be being a bit nice on him because at the end of the day, his opponents kicked three. Two of them were directly on him. I know one was a shitty free kick and the third one, it was sort of, you know, in, 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 a, in, a, in a different contest, but just a pass mark for me for Weeders. Um, he's, he's, he's obviously been a lot better than that. Um, and I, I have no doubt he'll respond. So that's how I felt about his game. Samo, I am... Worried. It's now. I'm now worried. I'm now worried about Samo. It's it's gone from <clears throat> he's playing a role. You know, I don't know anything about this game as much as what Tegi does and the coaches, and I trust them. Um, let's look at the. Let's look at it. So he starts up the ground for the early contest. First two kicks were turnovers. In fact, his first six kicks were in. His first six possessions were ineffective. There was one in defensive fifty. Five minutes and five seconds to go in the second. It goes inside 50 for a tab and a goal. Um, he had six at the half, which were all ineffective possessions. His first possession in the third was ineffective. So he's had his first seven touches were ineffective, 0%. <clears throat> um, he had a good tackle in the third quarter, which I thought I, I was waiting for the moment to take the note of when is his first positive moment going to come in this game. And, and that was it in the third um, hits his first target. How's this? He hits his first target. His first effective disposal came with one minute 56 to go in the third. Um, but if it's not your game, make it your moment. And he made it his moment. Three minutes, seven to go in the fourth quarter. A huge, huge tackle. He pins, I believe it was Chera holding the ball. And, you know, that was about it for him for his game. Um, I'm worried about him. He's... he's, he's He's not moving with a confidence. He's not. He's, 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 I don't know what it is. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to take it. Obviously, I love him. I respect him. I respect the coaches. And, and I'm just going to wait for it to, to turn around because I know it will turn around because he's too good. Um, but watching him last night, particularly in that first half, I found myself saying he, he's got to he's got to be dropped. Like, wh what's he giving us? He's not a lockdown defender. He's a guy that's been put there. As far as what I can tell from everything that I've read and listened to, he's been put back there to help generate a bit of attack. And I don't know. And and you know when he when he's such a good ball user, using the ball the way he did, it was it was just it's it's just sad to see because he's so talented. So I. I I gave him a, I gave him a three for his game, 
Um, yeah, it just it's not good enough. He's got to be better. We need a, we need a lot more from Samo for me anyway. Next line: Walshy, Crips, and Noons. Walshy, he was prominent early, very prominent early, and it was very impressive. Uh, he had six in the first quarter. He was working really hard, and that's just. That's the hallmark of his game. As each minute ticks over, you just see him more and more at contests. Um, I really enjoyed his first half. He, he was just solid. I think him and he and Ed in that first half really carried the load. Um, great goal in the third quarter. He's a star. He's a star, and and I hope that on uh, Gary Lyon and all these dickheads on the couch on Fox Footy start doing a, another 2018 draft rewind and, and re-rank them again. Because ranking has one good game and they want to re-rank the draft. Sam Walsh has had as good a season as any of that group in 2020. As good as any of them, if not the best. Consistent, new role, and something that everyone seems to be forgetting is the kid is in the leadership group at his age. None of these other kids are in the leadership group. They're just out there to go enjoy themselves and have a kick. He's out there doing those extras. And I've got so much respect for this guy because he works hard. He's a bit of a, there was a bit of adversity early in the season. We all backed him in. We all knew the character, the testament of, of the guy. And he's just he, he's, he's just a legend. I love him. I, lo- I love Sam Walsh. I, lo- I love that we picked him. Um, I love that whole draft. I love good players. But Walsh is our man. And, and this guy is going to be great for us. His work ethic, his handball in traffic to release set of field in that third quarter and Crips. Um, in the 30, he had to kick that goal. No doubt, he had another shot on goal. It was just an easier one. Maybe if he snapped it, it would have been a bit uh, easier for him. But yeah, and then in the fourth, he was just everywhere. And and I, I just loved his game. I I know that I know that I, I did say Ed Kerner was our best player. I actually believe Sam Walsh was our best player on the day. I do. I believe he was our best player. He had the 24 touches at 60% in the goal. Um, you know, in terms of the role he played, he was great. Um, I gave Sam Walsh a 10 for his game. Yeah, I, I was stoked with Sam Walsh's game. The, the work ethic, um, you know, I've got to, you've got to reward it for me, and that's just how I saw it. I loved his game. I loved Sam Walsh's game. Cripps, <sighs> Cripper, he's, a, he's such a battler. He's a warrior. Um, obviously, with this game, there's a lot of frustration, and has, you know, should Noons miss that kick? And we lose. There's a lot of frustration, and and I, Cripps um, had that had that um that shot on goal in the first quarter. That was it. That was it. There was his moment again. Didn't take it. Okay, we move on. Had a better start in the second quarter. I thought he was really good at stoppages. When it when it came to getting the handball out in in traffic, he was as good as anyone on the ground. When it came to kicking, he was as bad as anyone on the ground. Something's up. Something's wrong with his kicking, but. Anyway, let's let's talk about it. There was a poor kick in the second quarter, two minutes, 10 to go. Um, he sort of, I don't know what he was doing. He was a little bit mixed up. He kicks it into someone. He sort of shanks it off the boot. And then the symbolic nature of that moment was that straight after that, Fife had the ball, was in traffic, and he was able to get the clean possession out to open up Freo and, and give them some space going forward. And that was the symbolic moment there. He had uh, the 10 touches in the first half. They were all contested. So he's obviously battling in there and people are on him and scragging and and all of that. Um, I thought his first half was poor, really poor. I'll be honest. I thought his second half was a lot better and he just willed himself. Um, He had a hat kick in the third quarter, which was just poor to watch. Another kick turnover with six minutes, 26 to go in the third and another one with three minutes, 20 to go in the third. Um, there was a clever tap to Fisher in the third quarter with a minute 20 to go. He ends up with 24 touches, six clangers, 20 contested possessions, um, six tackles, and, and you know eight clearances, and he goes at 50%. And I found myself being really critical of his game, not because I hate him, because I clearly don't. I clearly love the guy, obviously. But, you know, there's the whole captain thing, and um, he... He willed himself in the contest, no doubt about that. Effort and all that was there, but effort for me, you're not going to get bonus points for effort. Effort is a non-negotiable for every player, let alone a captain. So um, I gave him a six for his game because there is so much more improvement in how he played that I can see. So I gave him a six, um, and that's just how I saw it. Jack Noons, um, yeah, so-so game. So, so game, it wasn't really that good. Are you fucking mad? 
Are you fucking mad? Holy shit. He... <laughs> what can you say about that kick? That is... You know, he... he He's a, he's a fascinating one. He's, he's a goal-kicking midfielder. Who would have thought? He's a goal-kicking midfielder consistently in 2020. Um, I, was, I was stoked for him. You know, he's not a flashy guy. He, doesn't, he didn't come to the club with a flashy reputation. And, and he has etched himself in the history of the club. That was one of the best moments of my Carlton supporting life. Probably goes to show what kind of a supporting life that I've had. Um, you know, it wasn't a great game, but it was a great moment. And, you know, that's all it is. He, he you know, t I, I talk a lot about new players to our club. We're, we're so passionate about our club and we love our players. And when we get behind them, we really get behind them. And, you know, when you're new to the club, you need to do something to endear yourself to the club. Jack Martin did it on debut. Um, I'm not sure if we've had it yet from Mitch McGovern, the real game where we've just completely hugged him and brought him in. He's obviously been injured, but Jack Noons, his effort can't go questioned. It's always there. He might not get a lot of the ball, but the effort's there. And, you know, he, he has the, what is it, 12 touches in the end, eight tackles, leads the team in tackles. Not many people talk about that. Um, and he kicks the goal, etches himself into Carlton history, and I'm giving him a 10. You know, like, he just won the game off his own boot. So, he literally won the game off his own boot. And um, very rarely do you get a moment like that, but um, I didn't think he had a, a, a particularly good game before that. You know, two in the first quarter, one of them was ineffective, um, four at the half, it wasn't good enough. Um, he's obviously lifted in the second half. It was a poor kick to Harry on his left in the third. Um, he got pinned for a throw in the fourth quarter with 10 to go. I thought he handballed it. Um, uh, pushing the back in the fourth quarter with 3.38 to go. So it was a bit of a dirty day. <laughs> it was a bit of a dirty day, but um, such such is life. Such is, such is my player ratings when you win the game off your own boot. Thank you, Jack Noons. I'm happy for him. I am. I'm happy for him. You know, let, I, t I spoke about Zach Fisher bringing me joy last week. Well, well Noons, Noons just brought joy to us for, for a long time. Yeah, you know we're in that we're back in the hunt in the season, and he's 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 done it. He's done it. So I'm happy for him. I'm stoked for him, and and yeah, I just felt it was fitting to give him a ten. So kill me for it, whatever. Half forward line, we have got Murphy, Casbolt, and Gibbons. Murphy, he had three in the first, which I thought was not good enough. He had a good start in the second. I thought he lifted a lot in the second. Uh, I really did. Um, one bad kick in that second, but overall, I thought he was great. Just lifted for us, and he played like that leader that we needed him to. He had 13 at the half, which was far from our worst. We had so many. We had, a, I think, Matt Kennedy was statless in the first quarter and might have had one or two at the half. Uh, those other guys didn't do a very good job in the first half. And I thought Murphy, although there were some mistakes, he had a really good first half. Uh, third quarter, 11 minutes 40 to go. There was a contest there. It didn't go hard enough. Um, his kick inside 50 was bad in that third quarter. Lucky we got a goal out of it. It was just a poor kick from him inside 50. Um, there was a beautiful, uh, what I thought was a beautiful handball out of traffic in the third with 10 minutes, 18 to go. Uh, it just sort of, it was just a, a smart handball and a direct turnover. Um, great kick inside 50 to Harry in the third quarter. Uh, and then a shit kick to center field uh, in the fourth quarter with 2.56 to go. The ball was just too high. And that's been a bit of a hallmark of his game this year. He's not kicking the ball with that, that low trajectory like he used to. Um, his game was, was, his game was, I thought it was good enough. I thought, you know, given the conditions and all of that, he ends up with the 23, goes at 47%. Um, half, more than half of his possessions were contested. Um, far from our worst, far from our worst. Um, he's got to be a little bit more cleaner. I gave him a seven for his game because I, yeah, yeah. I just thought he willed himself enough uh, and was, you know, there or thereabouts, but yeah, we, we need a bit more polish from him. And that will come in more dry conditions, no doubt about that. Levi, uh, free kick against him for blocking in the first, three minutes 31. Similar to the one last week where they pinned him against, I think it was Oscar Allen. And I was like, fuck me. Unbelievable. No, not his fault. I didn't think it was a block. Um, he was rucking a fair chunk, really helping with, with that. And 
I've given him a, a bit more credit for that because he played the dual role and, and you know, that takes a lot out of you and he did really well. Um, strong mark in the second quarter, 15.30 to goal. Um, 15.30 to go, I should say. And then a massive goal out of the ruck in the second quarter. And, and given we only scored 40 points for the game, the goals meant a little bit more. Uh, really strong mark, really strong uh, body positioning and, and you know, great goal. Uh, another strong mark in the fourth, 15.37 to go. Huge shot. Unfortunately, he misses it. Um, in the fourth quarter again, 14.48 to go. How is he pinned holding the ball? That was fucking bullshit, man. They've, they've just... They've just got that rule so wrong this year. They, they can't seem to get a, a consistent level of, of how they call it. And, you know, he was the one that suffered for it last night. Fourth quarter, another great mark, 7.31 to go. I thought he was great. I did. I thought he was great. I gave him an eight for his game. I thought he battled well. There was a big responsibility to sort of just help out and make sure, you know, Tom, Tom DeConing, DeConing got some help. I thought he did that really well, and I gave him credit. So I gave him an eight. Gibbons, another one. He had three in the first. It wasn't good enough. Uh, poor kick in the second. Seven minutes, 10 to go. Went out of bounds. Another good, a really good kick in the second. Six minutes, 12 down the line to Noons, which set up a great play. Unfortunately, Noons dropped that mark and it went out of bounds, but it was a beautiful kick. Um, he was good in traffic that set up the honey shot in the third quarter. It was He just sort of ran through traffic, opened up space, and then created offense for others. Um, inside 50 was very smart to Harry Mackay for that goal. I think it was in the fourth and he was all right. He was all right. He was better than last week. Last week was the worst game of his season, um, but he was a lot better. Uh, I gave him a six for his game. So I did enjoy that. I thought he was a, a level just below Murphy. Uh, so yeah, forward line, Eddie Betts, Harry Mackay, Zach Fisher, Eddie Betts, um, good pressure, good pressure for the kick out of bounds in the first, I believe it was 11.52 to go. Didn't have enough in the first quarter. The only other note I have on him here is a goal assist to Walsh in quarter three. He, he's putting the pressure on, which is great. Um, and I don't think you can drop him, especially if you've got Honey in the side, because you, you can't have like Honey and Owies. I know everyone wants to th you know talk about play the kids, play the kids, but no, you can't just play the kids because if Honey is, how many more kids do you want to play? Like Honey, Cottrell, DeConning, um, there's, a, there's a few kids playing, um, especially in that forward line, which is already, you know, dysfunctional as it is right now, especially last night. There was, it just wasn't working well last night. That, that forward craft, it wasn't working well. Obviously, our first selection forwards are not there. Um, McGovern probably straightens us up a little bit more. He's not there. Charlie's obviously not there. Jack Silvani's not there. Cunningham's not there. And I get that. But I think we need Eddie on the ground. Um, I couldn't find my way myself to give him a pass. I gave him a four uh, for his game. Um, but we, we, we need goals. We need goals from him. He's, he's We're starting to get to that moment where it's like, come on, Eddie, if you're not kicking a goal here and there. Like, it's been four weeks, I believe, now with no goals. So, you know, I back him in to get a few. But, yeah, it's, it's starting to get a little bit... I'm starting to worry a little bit about that position. So, anyway, I'm sure they'll figure it out. Harry Mackay, he was outmarked in his first two contests, Cox and uh, and Wilson in the first quarter. Uh, a great tackle on Liam Ryan, Liam Ryan uh, second quarter, 14 minutes, 10 to go. It was a huge shot on goal, and it was a mung of a kick. Just no good, nowhere near it. Um, another good tackle, which was he, he was rewarded holding the ball in the second quarter, 8 minutes, 30 to go. Uh, another great tackle in the third quarter, 11 minutes, 40 to go. How it wasn't holding the ball, I'll never fucking know. Oh, yeah. um, a poor kick on goal in the third quarter with nine minutes, 21 to go. He missed everything. Just a terrible pickup. Didn't get enough purchase on the kick as what he usually could, can. Um, huge moment for the goal, however, in the third. And a huge goal, which was which was very pleasing for me. He, uh, he took that moment um, and, and that was the main thing. He needed to do that. He needed to find a way to hit the scoreboard. Uh, he tried to run through the defenders in the fourth quarter um, in that moment, and he should have just handballed it out. We were out, um, but that's okay. A uh, huge moment again in the fourth. Unfortunately, he misses it. Um, I gave him a six for his game. We need him in there, obviously. He straightens us up, but I gave him just above a pass mark. Kicks a goal in a game where we kick, score 40 points and provided a target and all of that. So that's how I saw his game. Fish, his, his first quarter was, was not great, along with uh, the majority of them. He had one kick. 
and it was ineffective. Uh, we had a, a clearance early in the second quarter, and I started saying to myself, "Gee, we might we might need him up at stoppages because he just I've always felt it. He's just he's crafty. Um, good pressure in the second, huge shot on goal. Unfortunately, he misses it. Uh, it was a very gettable shot, a set shot. He should be kicking them. Uh, a good play in traffic in the third quarter, nine minutes forty to go. Great hands in traffic after that to set up the the Gibbon shot on goal with eight minutes twenty to go. He's got he's got quick hands, man. Quick, quick, lightning fast hands. Uh, he did it a couple of times. There was another one, so that one to Gibbons, another one to Setterfield straight after that. Um, a dance step, as they call it, in the third quarter to Harry Mackay uh, for his shot, I believe it was. He overcooked the handball in the third with a minute ten to go in space. Um, he tackled Chair right after Levi's pin for doing the same thing, as I mentioned before. Didn't get the, the hole in the ball call, which was very disappointing. Um, but I thought he had a pretty good game. Yeah, I thought he had a pretty good game. I thought, considering where he played, um, I gave him a seven for his game. He, he's just, he's creative, man. He's crafty, he's creative. And um, with Jack Martin out of the side, he's obviously going to get a, a few more touches in the midfield. I'm really interested to see how he, how he balanced that up when Jack Martin's back. Because I want to see him on the ball a little bit. I don't want to see him just as a forward because I just think he's too good. He's, he's too crafty. I, maybe he's not a full-time midfielder, but I, you know, he, he, he can generate some things for us. And uh, if we get stoppages in the forward half, that's where I think he can be at his most dangerous because he just reads things really well. So, yeah, I thought he was all right. Followers, we've got Tom DeConing, Ed Kono, and Setterfield. DeConing, he looks to have a great reach in the ruck. Loved his game. You know, for me, it was the big test. You know, we've all been waiting for this project ruckman to go about his business, and we've put some time into him now. And it was the first game where it was like, Tommy, you're in, mate. You are the sole, you know, you know, you're the lead ruckman for the day. And uh, I thought he did a really good job, a really good job. Um, he looks to have a great reach, as I said. I love his work in the ruck, in, in the contest with the tap work. There was a good one to Cripps, I believe, in the second quarter. 12 minutes, 40 to go. Um, the one th he's, he's had 21 hitouts, eight touches. The one thing about his game which we need to, we need to unlock is the marking. And, and especially, it's so important for a ruckman because... It can open up so many more avenues for his game. It can relieve us of so many more situations on the field. You know, a kick down the line. A ruckman's got to be able to take marks. And that's probably something he hasn't shown yet. Um, but as a ruckman, as an athletic ruckman with second and third efforts, I really enjoyed his game. Yeah, I was I was stoked for him. And I'm, I'm happy to see his development. I gave him an eight for his game. Obviously, it's all relative to who the player is, where they're at in their career, and their role and all of that. So I was stoked. I thought he more than well, you know, well and truly held his own. Ed Kerno, he was he was Herculean. He he played that Crips type, you know, that Crips game that we've spoken about over the last few years. Um, he was our best in the first quarter, seven touches. First half, I thought he was far and above our best player. Um, Spall and Walters in the second with six minutes thirty to go, and he just battled for us all day. The only knock on him, he has the 33 touches. He goes at 36%. And I understand you look at that, the raw numbers, and you think, oh, it's not a really good game. But it was a really good game. He was gaining territory for us. And obviously, with, with kicks like that, some of them, in, in this case, a lot of them are going to be turnovers. He had the 10 clearances, four clangers. Um, he's had the, the four tackles. And I, I thought by the end of the game, because Walsh was a little bit more cleaner and kicked the goal, I ended up giving Walsh the, the three votes. But Ed, nevertheless, he battled so much. He was so important for us in that first half. He, he was the man. And I gave him a nine for his game. So it's an interesting one because he hasn't kicked the ball very well, but I gave him a nine for his game. That's just how I saw it. That's just how I felt. That, that was my gut feel and, and who contributed to the win. So... There's that. Setterfield, I thought he started really quietly, particularly in the first quarter. Um, he had five in the second, a little bit better, I thought, but we needed a bit more. Good kick on his left foot to Honey, to Josh Honey in, in the third with 29 seconds to go. Um, but yeah, it wasn't his best game. He had the six tackles, the 18 touches, which if that's not his best game, and that's where he can reach that minimum standard, that's development for me, and I'm happy with that. So yeah, I think there's a bit of improvement there for Will. I gave him a I gave him a seven for his game. I did. I gave him a seven for his game, but I think we can get more from him uh, for sure. 
Interchange bench, Willow, Cottrell, Kennedy, Honey. Willow, he attacked the footy um, really strongly in the first 12 minutes, 22 to go in a really good contest. Apart from that, it wasn't anything. He didn't do much. I think we had one possession. Um, he fell over again. Another another moment where he's fallen over in the second quarter with eight minutes to go. Um, and then he has two crucial moments. He pins Nat Fife holding the ball twice in the second quarter. Huge. Massive. Um, he tried a little bit too much with his kick in the fourth, 14 minutes to go. One thing about Tom Williamson, every time I write... It seems every time I write a criticizing comment about what he's done, within a minute, he's at the next contest doing something right. And this was the case here. A great clearing kick in the fourth, 12 minutes, 34 to go, out of, out of, um, out of congestion to Harry Mackay on the wing was beautiful. Um, a good clearing dash in the fourth, 2 minutes, 30 to go. He nearly got pinned. It was a, a, on a knife's edge. Had he got pinned, he's probably getting himself a five. <laughs> but he didn't. Um, he just sort of worked his way and maneuvered his way through traffic and and got the kick away and, and the run away and I thought he was I thought it was actually really good for us. He had the and the nine touches going at seventy seven percent. So I thought yeah, I actually thought he had more of the ball. He's that, he's one of those guys. He it looked like he had a lot more of the ball than what he did. I gave him a seven for his game. Cottrell, um, I'm stoked for him. Stoked. I, I was happy to see him back in the side after last week. I thought he showed enough endeavour. And he's backed it up. Let's let's go through it. Good clearances in stoppages in the first quarter. A couple of them. A huge roving goal on the left. Um, and the G-up. And the G-up. Yes, young man. Yes. Yes. Let him know. That was great. That got me going. That was great. It was, I was happy for him. Um, he was working really hard. It was a turn, there was a turnover kick to Blakely in the fourth. Uh, eight minutes, 15 to go. Just a rushed kick out of defense. And he's, he'll learn from that, no doubt. He'll learn from that. Luckily, Blakely missed, I think. And uh, I just found him in the fourth. He was providing, all, all game, he was providing an option up the ground. And he's had he's had the 14 touches, all kicks. He kicked a goal. He's in his second game. We had a lot of doubt about him. I gave him an eight for his game. I loved his game. I thought he was really good. And I want to keep him in the side next week. I didn't, you know, with, with a guy like that, I was thinking early in the game, you know, we've got Honey, we've got Cottrell. Are we carrying blokes a bit? Not with Cottrell. We might have carried Honey a bit, first game, uh, all of these things. But I didn't feel like we carried Cottrell. He held his own and contributed very well. So gave him an eight. Matt Kennedy, ghost. First quarter, he was a ghost. Didn't notice him. Statless. Poor. His first kick came in the second quarter with 10 minutes, 17 to go. He's, it was his worst half of the year. You got to move on. Got to make it your moment. Um, he had a moment in the third. His handball release set a field in the third quarter, and uh, it was uh, what do you have in the end? Eleven touches, seventy-two percent. I gave him a four for his game. I thought it was just below, just below what we need from him. Um, I thought, having said that, he battled really well to get himself back in the game, but. Can't, you know, just that, that first quarter really hurt us and he needed, he needs to find a way to be better. He's going all right. He's had sort of, he sort of goes from, from good to not good to good to not good. So hopefully next week he can respond. Um, but yeah, it was a, he's kicked, he kicked, I think four against Gold Coast last year as well. So maybe a bit of form there, maybe something to look at there. So yeah, it was not his worst game. Ugh. Maybe his worst game for the year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think this was his worst game for the year, for sure. But that's okay, because um, I, I believe in him. I do. And finally, Josh Honey. A few touches in the first. All of them were ineffective. Good little pickup early in the third. Uh, and then a huge moment in the third, which he missed the, the goal. Um, yeah, he just didn't, wasn't able to... It was exciting for him. I was so happy to see him in the side. And you got to think about the journey that he's been on, you know, where he was drafted and, and to earn himself a game. That's massive for him. That's huge. Uh, I gave him a four for his game. I didn't think we got what we needed from him, but, you know, I can I can smile about it because, you know, he's, he's a debutante, not pot-shotting him. Um, he's got to be a bit better. He's got, he's got to find a way to get a little bit more ball, be a bit more cleaner, um, you know, maybe the occasion. It, it's tough. I can only imagine what it's like playing in that league, you know, your first game as well, coming from sort of how far back he's come from. Um, so, yeah, I, do I hope he stays in? 
Yeah, I do. I do. I want to see him for a couple of weeks. I want to see. I want to see him next week for sure. For sure. I think that's a good opportunity to play him next week against the Gold Coast Suns, and and hopefully you can jag one because you can just tell when he gets one, he is going to bring some energy to the group, and I, you know, it's going to be a freaky goal. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing him in the coming weeks. But that's me, guys. That's me. That's those. Those are my ratings. Um, I'll have a document ready at some point after this video. Uh, I want to thank Sean Costello. Now, Sean, um, I've obviously, I've been doing my player ratings for a couple of years now. Now, this year, rounds one to four, I didn't save them in my Excel spreadsheet document. And uh, a few of you asked for the player ratings for the year, for a tally. And I had from round five onwards. And Sean Costello went through rounds one to four, watched the videos again, and took my player ratings for every player and sent them to me. And Sean, I just want to thank you for that because now you've given me and this community the ability the ability to see um, the cumulative score for the year. So I'll have that document ready at some point, either today on sun on Sunday or tomorrow on Monday. Um, before this game, Weedering was ahead by nine points, I nine votes. I believe he was on eighties, but we'll see because I think I think um, Ed Kerno's uh, caught up on him a little bit. So. Um, I'll have that out, but Sean, I really want to thank you, mate. That was that was humbling for you to to reach out and 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 do that, do that sort of work. And I really appreciate it. And that is a testament to what this channel and this community is all about. And I'm so proud of it. I'm so I, I love what I do. I love I love what I do. I love this community. Um, it keeps me sane. It keeps me going. It's, it's, it's what lights me on fire. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there and thank you guys and, and thank Sean and, um, yeah. Go the fucking baggers, mate. Go the baggers. Yeah.